What's up, guys, and welcome, Daily Theologians. Hold on to your hats because it's going to be a wild baseball game. Is Joel Osteen playing foul ball as he's about to preach to Yankee Stadium? You're not going to want to miss this one. Check this out. So come on, what are you doing, Joel Osteen? He's going to have an evangelism meeting in Yankee Stadium, and he wants to bring people together. Now, I read this article, and I immediately thought, is this foul ball? Is he really going to preach on repentance? And so, as you know, Joel Osteen is notorious for being a false teacher and a prosperity preacher. And those go together because it's all about the money and about being happy and your best life now. And he's written book by that title. So we are rightly skeptical when you hear Joel Osteen mention repentance, as he did recently, referring to this event coming out of the lockdowns from the past few years. So let's see what he has to say here in this article. So first he says, the one definition of repentance is to change your mind, adding every week when I'm speaking, notice not preaching, on television, I'm trying to get people to change their mind, to know that God's for them. Okay, that's the instant problem. God is opposed to the wicked. God is angry with the wicked. To see themselves as if they're made in the image of God, not unworthy, not a failure to change their mind about forgiven, to change their mind about living a life of compromise and addiction, not making good decisions. So it's just a different way to do it. Yeah, a different unbiblical way to do it. Not letting them feel guilty. You know, if I would have uh, paid more attention, I would have had this uh, verse. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict of sin, righteousness, and the coming judgment. And none of that is mentioned there. In fact, he says he, he doesn't want people to feel bad. Now, some of this is true. This is what makes Osteen such a sticky tricky person for people to call out as a false teacher. But if you have any discernment at all, you can tell that this is not right. Uh, see themselves as made in the image of God. Well, that's true. That's good and right. The problem is he's saying he wants to get them to change their mind, not about sin, not about the coming judgment, not about their personal guilt, but about being forgiven. Just kind of decide you're forgiven. Decide your life is no longer going to be addicted. And that's why people get confused about him. So here's the second portion. In one sense, I'm preaching repentance every week because I'm trying to get you to change your mind into what Christ says you are. Now, notice that says change your mind into what Christ says you are. Speak it. Speak it into existence. Instead of you must be born again, regenerated by the Holy Spirit, God's sovereign grace, in order to believe these things, in order to work actual sorrow over sin. He's saying, just you know, just kind of decide. And he continues, this is what I feel like I'm called to do. I know it's more encouragement, but this is who I was before I was a minister. I didn't just change one day when I decided to start ministering. Well, that's interesting because people that are born again uh, do change and they do change in an instant. They're born again and they have a new nature. Uh, so he says, I didn't just change one day. It was just when me, I, I stepped in never knowing stadiums would fill up. I didn't even know this would happen except the grace of God, the sovereignty of God. Notice he uses the sovereignty of God there. I mean, that is a foul ball. That's like throwing at somebody's head theologically because he does not understand the sovereignty of God at all. Victoria Osteen added that people are drawn to God that is good, not one who is judging everything you do. Interesting because the biblical word is helco, drawn as in a net by force, compelled against your will. Uh, and God does judge. See, in the Osteen world, God never judges. God is not angry with sin. God is like an umpire that really just is for everyone breaking the rules, running around, hitting each other with bat. doesn't matter in their baseball game. God would never throw someone out of the game. God would never be angry with someone in that sense. Well, the problem is that that's idolatry and that is heretical and that is exactly where they line up. Let's go to uh, their hope in the article is that churches would, these people would get plugged into churches, which is biblical language for just find somewhere you can go. Don't actually repent and believe. Don't be obedient to the things God has said. Just get plugged in. Plugged in is always shorthand for heretical view of church. Uh, and, and now I say that, but it's, in my opinion, it's a shorthand to not actually teach on obedience to the gospel, obedience to the local church, submission to authority, love for God because your heart has been changed. I have a clip from MacArthur that I'm going to play, but first I want to go to the R.C. Sprola and his definition of actual repentance. Check this out. So R.C. Sproul says, in the original Greek, metanoia is the term that is most commonly translated repentance. In English, this word literally means change of mind. Now, notice the mind and the heart are the same in Hebrew thought, and it's connected to regeneration. I'm just throwing that in there. Repentance, change of mind, a switch from an outlook that esteems sin. Notice R.C. Sproul mentions sin to one that considers its abhorment. It's 
important that we remember, however, that scripture understands a true change of mind to be one that includes more than just a shifting of intellectual categories. To have metanoia, to have true repentance involves feelings of regret, remorse. Re and notice the Osteens don't want any part of that definition. Repentance means we are truly sorry for something we've done, not just its consequences. We want to change the behavior. A repentant life is a changed life. Not that perfection is ever attained, but the fruit of repentance is changed actions and attitudes becomes discernible in a person's character. Luke 3, 7 through 9. Now, we have to recognize that is fundamentally different than what the Osteens are saying. In fact, they're saying, if you read what they say, the exact opposite. They don't want people to feel sorry. They don't want people to be judged. They don't want God to be a cosmic judge. Well, he is the judge. So check out this clip from MacArthur talking about churches needing to repent because the Osteen strategy is to get people plugged in to local churches. This is ecumenicalism. And there's no discernment on what church is. Why? And the Osteens, I would never recommend anyone listen to or go to anything they say or do. So any church that they partner with, I am instantly very afraid for. Check this out. And I would probably ascertain that most pastors think the church is about the safest place you could be when it comes to threats from Christ. But that's not true. Very strong, very direct threats are made against churches, and they're found in this section. That is not something that is very often discussed. It's not acknowledged, but it's critically important. You have only this passage where Christ actually addresses specific churches and calls them to repent and reform. So that led me to ask the question, which I asked back at the conference, have you ever heard of a church that repented? Ever. A church that repented. Now I bring that up because Osteen's Lakewood needs to repent. And these places he's sending these people to need to repent. And they need to teach on repentance. Uh, that's the issue. You can't have this view of low view, view of doctrine and theology and assume you're doing the will of God. Doctrine divides the clarity of Scripture, the theological precision of actual biblical teaching cuts through the heart. It cuts through all the fluff. And it says you are a guilty sinner and you must repent or perish, face God's wrath in hell. Jesus Christ fulfilled. is always one of repentance. The problem is one of understanding the gospel, and Osteen does not. Osteen is a self-help guru. This is the health and wealth, claim it, blab it and grab it, whatever, prosperity, and it's, it's false. So if you're still watching this, take a moment, and please remember to hammer that like button. <laughs> Like the 95 Theses, leave a comment below because this is the type of thing where it says, see, Joe Osteen preaches repentance. It mentioned repentance. He said repentance. Yeah, but it doesn't, it does not mean what he's saying it means. So please remember to have discernment, study the Bible actually, and learn to recognize a false teacher when you see one in a Yankee baseball hat. Thanks for watching and God bless.